Hey everyone, I'm back live here from Austin, Texas. Will's World live from the car. If you notice, I put a little link below. Facebook has provided this uh, way that we can support charities through our live videos. I'm headed to Orange Coworking this morning and I'm bringing you a story of a frozen woman, a woman in her 80s that Karen and I visited a few years ago. Um, but first, before I get that, how many of you have ever noticed when you have really low energy in the day and you put headphones on and you put some really inspirational music, something that really inspires you, that that sort of lights up the circuits in your, your body and your brain and you feel like somehow that those sounds coming into your ears are almost like coffee being inserted directly into your veins. How many of you had that feeling? I want you to comment below or, or give me a like or a, a heart if you've had that effect. You've, you're really low energy and you put music on that you really enjoy that inspires you and it pumps you up and you're ready to take on the day. So, <clears throat> yes, right? How many of you forget to use that technique? You know, maybe you have a beer or drink coffee instead of putting the music on. Well, so it not only does, does live music or recorded music um, have an effect on the, the circuitry of the brain for folks of us who have normal brains, but that same effect can help, and it's been well documented in science recently, uh, patient, uh, memory care patients. You think I would probably need to uh, maybe listen to some more music because I left work this morning without my wallet. I didn't remember my wallet. So either that or I'm, I'm, uh, you know, <laughs> Mr. Absent-minded professor here. So I just pulled into Orange Coworking and I wanted to bring you this story. So it's well documented as we know, uh, or maybe some of you know, uh, there's a film documentary called Alive Inside that I would recommend all of you check out after this video or if you can tonight, watch it. And it's about this gentleman who travels around with this author, Oliver Sacks. So the documentary again is called Alive Inside. It's on Netflix. You can watch it. And it's he's going around and trying to get these nursing homes and retirement and Al Alzheimer's care centers to use iP iPods, iPhones, earbuds to help these uh, memory care patients have a better life and get in touch with their memories. And it's just so moving to see the effect of just putting on what they research the background and the history of these individual patients and they make these custom playlists and they put the headphones on and to see the transformation from somebody who is like this to becoming alive and and it's like the light bulb pops in pops on inside them and they start remembering things and the the music basically lights them up so <clears throat> I have actually had this experience in person many, many times here in Austin, Texas, traveling with Karen Mall on a Swan Songs visit. Swan Songs is Christine Albert's organization that uh, basically pairs musicians with people that are on their last days on the earth here. Uh, and so it's live music as opposed to recorded music. And there is one extra little advantage I think that live music has over the recorded music. I think it'd be wonderful if, if we could get all these uh, iPods out to care centers and looking back when you think about the end of life and the beginning of life there's this kind of bookends that happens a lot when we come into life we're very vulnerable and we need as, as children and babies we need our parents and to help us survive you know this this harsh environment and at the end of life we kind of return to that and that um, part of life used to be reserved for family you know the, the our elders would be taking care of family and so maybe the family would have they would sing songs around the piano so now that uh now that's being taken over as uh, an industry and has been an industry since uh, we know just sh shortly after the turn of the century it became this whole new industry you know the caring of elders and putting it off in this safe place a lot of the elders are not getting uh, you know the, the care that they would by their own own families including having live music. So Karen and I visited um, a retirement, and actually it was a nursing home about five years ago for Swan Songs. We we played uh, two concerts right across two different, <clears throat> in, in two different rooms or right across from each other. And we did one and it was a very coherent person. They enjoyed the music 
And then we, before we went into the second room, the staff gave us a little warning that said this woman had essentially was frozen and hadn't spoken in weeks. Uh, and they didn't, ex you know, they said, well, they were giving us kind of a little heads up to not expect much when we went in there, but that even if we don't get a response, that that doesn't mean that our live music and our songs aren't having an effect. And again, kind of like in this program, Alive Inside, they give us a preparation with, tell us what kind of music that the, um, the patient liked, what they grew up, what time period, so that we can have some preparation. So Karen, they, they kind of pair us with people knowing that we do early music from the 20s, you know, like early swing music, the 20s and 30s and 40s. So Karen and I walked in and we always go in, it was just a, much of an open heart and, and looking in the eye of our recipient, of our, the person that we're going to connect with. And we just sit down and we just put it out there. And I remember we played um, some old, like I said, old 20s and 30s songs. We went through one song, and Karen and I are doing our thing, and this woman was completely shut down. I use the word, the frozen woman. Her body was just stiff, all closed in like this. And I think we started to play Moon River, and she started to lift her head up, and just like in the movie, Alive Inside, she became gradually more alive and her eyes opened and she looked at us and literally we had this connection, this 80 year old woman becoming connected with us. We continued sending out love just as if she was a normal audience member at any show that we would do. And at the end of it, she started speaking and talking in a language I couldn't understand. It might've been German. She was just emotionally moved and she was crying and speaking in some song that we had played had triggered something in her. We walked up to her, we put our hands on her, and the staff was sobbing and they were taking pictures and said that basically after we walked out that she hadn't spoken in weeks and something about the music had switched on something al alive in her and she was speaking and talking and it was just an unbelievable experience to, to witness. And I think the key difference between the headphones, obviously not all nursing homes can have uh, a staff of musicians, but maybe they can. Maybe that's a possibility we can make happen. But the ability to have this instant relationship with a stranger bridged. We go in, they're a stranger, we play music, we trigger something with their past and their memories that brings alive, it brings some moment from them in the way, way past, maybe 70, 80 years ago, into the present. And all of a sudden, after we have that musical performance, we are no longer strangers. We are connected to that person, and there's a context where we can walk up, and actually, they often invite us to come close and put our hands on them and give them a hug. So having that physical contact, which if the family had taken in the elder, they would have that physical contact. That part, becomes part of that musical connection that we have, have, have made. And of course, this only happens for that little time period and then we're on and we're gone and most likely they pass away very soon after that. But it's been a beautiful thing to witness and I, I'm, I just wanted to share that story with you because I think that this is, these are the things that musicians could be doing during the mornings and the afternoons when they're not gigging. These are the ways that we could be employed that we could use our gifts. And right now, it's I'm not doing that as much as I want to or as I could be doing. And part of my commitment to you, if you sign on as a patron subscriber of Strings Attached, not only do you get all of the content that I'm creating, all the, the music videos, the live, everything, my archive which I'm of past shows which I'm going to be bringing online, but when we reach 200 patron subscribers, I'm going to commit to doing four outreach shows per month for people that can't afford that. I'm going to give that so you guys can help uh, enable me and Karen and whoever else beyond that to go out and, and bring that beautiful connection with music, that healing power during the afternoons and during the mornings. We're going to start with four per month 
if you if we reach the 200 subscriber level we're only at 50 subscribers right now I have over 6,000 fans on my email list I have over 10,000 fans on Facebook all all over the world I think it's reasonable that we could do this that we could find 200 patron subscribers for five dollars or more per month and I invite you to do that right now so and please check out swan songs in Austin check out what they do go look at their website check out the uh, documentary Alive Inside. It's on Netflix. And check out the little donation thing I have here about ALS on the live video. I'm going to go to work now. And please subscribe to my videos. Subscribe to stringsattached.bandcamp.com. Share the video. I need about five to ten people to come on average for us to make our goal by April 30th to reach 200 subscribers. I need about five to ten Per day. We're at 50 subscribers. All right. You guys have a wonderful day. Love every one of you. And let's do this today, shall we? Okay. Let's get it. Let's get it going. Thanks a lot. See you soon. Subscribe down below. You can press notify me when I'm live. You can also go to the YouTube link below and subscribe there. All kinds of content. We're remaking the music business from the bottom up, from the ground up. We're using subscriber the subscriber model, the membership model, the same model that Netflix is using. That's what we're asking you to consider. We are, we're, are excited about how we can be a service to you and your family. Oh, I forgot to mention, when we reach the 200 subscriber level, the patrons are going to get first dibs on where we do those four outreach concerts per month. So that's a benefit. If you're a patron, you can say, Will, I'd like you to visit my grandmother at this nursing home, or I'd like to visit... I'd like you to visit so-and-so, she's in the hospital, or I'd like you to come do a school show at my school where the music program has been cut, or we don't have enough money to have b amazing professional musicians to come in and fire up the string program, to fire up the music program. So there's this incredible resource that's available Monday through Friday, Monday through Sunday, when we're not gigging at night. Let's make that a resource available, but we gotta get to 200 subscribers, for stringsattached.bandcamp.com. It's that easy. We've got 50 people. We're one quarter of the way there. And I'm asking you to consider five bucks a month. Come on board. You can download all of my music. And if you were to buy all of my music, it would cost you, which by the way, it's not just my music. It's all the different artists we've collaborated with over the years that I have online that I've professionally recorded. If you were to buy all that separately, it would cost you over $200. So, um, because of the digital revolution, I'm making it available here to all subscribers for strings attached band contact band strings attached dot band camp dot com. Why don't you make my morning really exciting right now? Make it for me. When I go in there and I log on to my email, I'll see what subscriber subscribed just from this video. Can you do it for me, Doug? Can you do that, <laughs> Doug Marsis? Come on, come on board. There's all kinds of cool videos I'm bringing online about how I write music, how I arrange music, or analyzing. So there's there there's things there for musicians too. All right, I'm Mr. Salesman this morning, hoping and dreaming that I get to 200 subscribers and I have to be less of a salesman and can be more of a service-oriented person who can go out and do great things with this, all these relationships I've built, musicians that I know that I can take them out and use that resource for good. Let's go.